Guys, what's going on? I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope everything's good wherever you are. Um, guys, uh, I want to do a two-part video to this. I want to talk about Caleb Plant wanting a rematch with Saul Canelo Alvarez. Um, yeah, so and also I want to talk about latest with Kel Brook. Um, let's do it the other way. Let's start. Let's start the you know do the Canelo one at the end of the video. Let's talk. Let's talk about uh, Kel Brook first, uh, guys. Uh, there's a lot of rumors about um, not rumors, but you know Kel Brook looks like he's gonna fight again, um, and Kel Brook looks like there's there's a lot of fights that are being talked about for Kel Brook. Yeah, he won the fight against Amir Khan, so right you know rightfully he's now being discussed. Uh, you know, with other good, other good names. You know, some names that are a bit bigger than him. Some names that bigger than him in the sense that bigger than him in terms of weight. Um, there's there's names like Eubank, Danny Garcia has been mentioned. Matthew Macklin mentioned Josh Taylor as well. Um, how do I? How do? What do I think should be next for Kel Brook? Look, personally, I think Kel Brook sh should probably... I think the best option would be to maybe retire. Um, but, you know, I think I think Amir Khan, for example, he should definitely retire. Uh, Amir Khan is also an option as well, a rematch, which I don't think is going to happen. Um, I, I, I'll give you, I think, what's going to happen. Um, I think Kel Brook... I think the Josh Taylor fight, I, I, although it's been, uh, Matthew Macklin mentioned it, I don't think that's, I think Ben Shalom said that a couple of weeks ago, that's not really a possibility. Because I don't think, I don't think, you know, Josh Taylor's going to be wanting to go up to 149 to fight Kell Brook. And it's it's kind of like a nothing fight. Like, what is, what is, like, look, Josh Taylor can gain something because Brook's a decent name, big name. And uh, Brook's a bigger profile than Josh Taylor. So Josh Taylor can benefit. I think for Josh Taylor, it would have been better if Amir Khan had won. Because that would have made the fight a lot easier. Because Amir Khan's a one four seven fighter. Which would have meant it would have been an easy fight to make. Whereas Kel Brook's really not really a welterweight fighter now. He, he likes to fight at 150, uh, 149. Like, I don't know. Could Kel, does Kel Brook want to make 149? I don't know. I don't know. Um, would Josh Taylor be willing to go up to 149? I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't know whether he'd be willing to do that. Possibly, maybe not, maybe so. Um, I think a fight that really makes a lot of sense is probably the Danny Garcia fight. You know, Danny Garcia is somebody that is still like he's not in his prime, but he's still a world level fighter, right? And that for me is a before I go on to the Danny Garcia fight, actually, let me come back to Taylor. That fight might be able to sell Taylor Brook because of the fact that, you know what, Brook looked good against Amir Khan and Taylor didn't look so good against Catrol. So now that might be intrigued there. Personally, I think that a lot of people are getting flattered by the Brook, Brook beating Amir Khan. I think Amir Khan was a total shell of himself and I think that made Brook look much better. Than where he's actually at at this point I, I don't think he's going to look Anywhere near that good against Anyone else at world level Because Amir Khan's not at world level anymore He's nowhere near that level He looked like a guy, He basically looked like David Hay was against Bellew He was totally shot You know um, The only difference is Hay had an Achilles injury Whereas Khan just, just doesn't Amir Khan doesn't But by the way Amir Khan's having so many injuries So many surgeries after fights now he clearly is not the... He clearly, you know, his body is kind of given up. So, again, I think that win is flattering Brook. And I, I... I think a fight with Josh Taylor, I would favour Josh Taylor, of course, you know. But I actually think it's an intrigue because I was speaking to my brother the other day and he doesn't rate Josh Taylor that much. He said, I think Brook could beat him. You know, but again, like, Josh Taylor's got a quite a strong chin. Brooks not the biggest puncher in the world, right? We saw that against Amir Khan, right? And Taylor, although he had a poor performance against um, Catrol, Taylor 
you know he's he's dangerous you know he is dangerous you know he's a he's a very he's a good fighter uh, i don't think he's as good as what some people i actually think it's a good fight i think, I think it's a good fight but i don't think brooks gonna go down that avenue i don't think taylor's gonna go down that avenue and that's why i think the fight's not gonna happen i think there's bigger fights potentially for brook i think the biggest fight of the lot financially is eubank but eubank for me is a no-go because i think eubank will batter him uh, i do i think eubank's too big um Kell Brook isn't going to hurt Eubank. Eubank's just going to blow him away. Um, so I, I don't think I don't think the I don't think the I don't think the fight with Eubank makes uh, any kind of any 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 kind of sense in terms of a competitive fight because Eubank's too big. He's too big. Um, then I look at then I look at. The Danny Garcia fight, that fight makes a lot of sense because Garcia would be willing to fight him at 154. Plus, Garcia is not as big as Brook. And Garcia, for me, he beat a prime Khan. He beat Amir Khan in his prime, right? And Kel Brook's not got a great resume. Let's be brutally honest. When we look at Kel's resume, he lost to Spence, Golovkin, Crawford, and people will say, well, yeah, he was always going to, right? But he beat Sean Porter in a very close fight. But he beat him, right? That's his only win. And then he beat Amir Khan. But Amir Khan was so washed up. You know, and I think I also I all come to the fact that a lot of the neutrals, right, look at it and think Khan was so badly washed up that a lot of them are saying, well, you know, Kel now thinks he's a world beater. And, you know, Bro uh, Khan was so washed up And people think that Brooks ready for a shot tie But it was the nature of the fight I always said the winner of that fight Was always going to get put back in credential for a big fight That was just the nature and the size of that fight So Brooks has earned That opportunity to fight again And fight at a good level again Whether he can perform at that level Is, is another question I, don't, I personally don't think he can But you know that's for him to go out and then prove But I, I again, I'll say it again. I think that Khan fight really flatters Brook. I honestly do because I think Amir Khan was so past his best that that made Brook look better than or, or look better placed than where he is at in his career. I generally do. In terms of the Garcia fight, see Garcia for me is a good fight because Garcia is also past his prime. Although Garcia is still a relevant top world level fighter, which I don't think Brook is. Um, and I personally think Brook. He's at the stage of his career where he can go in against any top-level fighter and still look respectable. Whereas Khan is so washed up that he'll go in there and it'll look, like an embarrass it'll look embarrassing. Whereas Brook has still got something left where he can go in because he... he for me, Brook is not shot. Brook is damaged. He's got damaged eye sockets, which if it's a tough fight, that's going to come into play. And with the Garcia fight... Garcia is a favourite against Kell Brook. He'd be the bookie's favourite to win that fight. So Kell Brook can add to his legacy and add to his resume, which Kell Brook needs to do. But again, it's a risky fight, right? And here's why I think Kell's going to take the Eubank fight. Because the Eubank fight is no leg legacy fight in the sense if Kell loses to Eubank, right? People will say, well, Kell was too small. Whereas if you lose to Danny Garcia at 154... There's no excuses there. You're fighting a guy who's at the similar stage of his career as you are. Yeah, he's more accomplished than you. Yeah, Garcia's achieved more than Kell Brook. You know, he's a former unified light welterweight champion and a welterweight world champion. So he's a more accomplished fighter. He's got a better resume. He's got better wins on his record. He's a more accomplished fighter than Kell Brook. He's achieved more. However, a win over Danny Garcia... Kell Brook's resume now starts to look much stronger. He beats... Because remember, for me, beating Danny Garcia is a big achievement. Because Danny Garcia would be favourite going into that fight. And Danny Garcia's got a granite chin. He punches very hard. So for me, that... If Kell Brook can pull that off, wow, that is that would be some win. Uh, he, because Garcia, for me, like, I don't see Brook winning that fight. I don't. Maybe a couple, four or five years ago, different story. Now we don't beat Garcia. Garcia hits too hard. Garcia's got too good a chin. 
Kel Brooks not, never had great stamina. You know, even in his prime, he didn't have great stamina. Brook can't hurt Garcia. You know, Garcia's, Garcia's not Khan. Garcia's got one of the best chins in boxing. He's never been put down, never been hurt. Brook's been put down. Brook's been hurt. Garcia's fought them all. He fought Amir Khan in his prime. He fought Lamont Peterson in his prime. He fought Errol Spence in his prime. He fought Sean Porter. He fought Keith Thurman. He's never been hurt. He's never been put down. So Kel Brook isn't a bigger puncher than these guys that I'm mentioning. And Kel, like I said, we saw in the last fight against Khan, uh, you know, he, he, he couldn't even put him down. So he ain't putting Garcia down. But Garcia can hurt Kel Brook. Right? And that's where the problem lies. Because back in the day, Brook was the bigger man. Brook might have been able to tame Garcia and win a decision. I don't think Brook's got the stamina. And and there'll come a point in that fight where at this point in their careers, where Garcia will will start throw caution to win because Garcia is not going to be hurt by Kel's power. So then Garcia is going to start walking forward and landing some because Garcia can punch. Garcia can really punch uh, with that left hook. And he can do some serious damage. And at this point in Kel Brook's career, if he lands anything near those sockets, right, Garcia has the has the power to break him, not just break him, really hurt him as well. So that's a very interesting fight for me because if Kel Brook can pull that off, Kel Brook's resume and career, although he didn't have a great career in, at world level, like, like, you know, he didn't really fight a lot of top guys. Uh, well, he did. You know, but he lost them fights. I'm saying in terms of fights where a lot of people expected him to lose to Spence. You know, he was the bookies underdog in that fight. A lot of people expected him to lo definitely lose to Golovkin and, and Crawford. But against Garcia, this would have been a type of fight like a 50-50 fight in Kell Brook's prime. This would have been a fight which would have been like two similar level type of guys fighting each other. Do you see what I mean? Like neither one is, even though a Garcia was more accomplished... Right, and he achieved more in his career. Kell Brook would have had an opportunity to beat him. You know what I mean? It would have been a good fight. Now people, now Brook fanboys would would have would say, "Oh, Garcia, Kell Brook would have walked right over." No, no, no. Nobody walks over Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia had a split decision loss against Keith Thurman. Danny Garcia, in my opinion, beat Sean Porter and and got jobbed. And that was a split decision, if I'm not mistaken. The only guy that has managed to beat. Danny Garcia convincingly is Errol Spence and Errol Spence right that was a that was an in prime Danny Garcia that was a Danny Garcia that was fairly inactive that was a Danny Garcia that I don't think had the hunger desire that he once had in his prime but if you look at prior to the Spence fight right Danny Garcia's only lost to Sean Porter and Keith Thurman and like I said I thought he beat Sean Porter I, d I don't think Porter deserved to win that fight. Just like I didn't think Porter deserved to beat Ugas. I think the Thurman fight, I think he legitimately lost. I think Thurman was just a better fighter. But again, it was a split decision. It was a close fight. And that, that was Keith. That was the Keith Thurman. That was the Keith Thurman that I thought was the best welterweight in the world. That was the Keith Thurman that I thought would have beaten Khan, Brook, uh, would have beaten Ev Port I beat Porter and Garcia. I think that Thurman would could have even beaten Spencer Crawford. I think that Thurman was that good. He that Thurman was the Thurman, you know. And unfortunately, we didn't get to see that Thurman. A lot of people want to see Thurman against Brook. Thurman batters Brook at this point. You know, Thurman still got Thurman still got. A bit left he's still i think uh, a, a, an opponent for crawford is still an opponent for spence now i do, don't think he wins those fights but i still think thurman should be talked about in those fights and those are fights that i'd still like to see i don't think brooks at that level anymore where he can fight those type of guys we saw against crawford it was a wrap as soon as crawford landed something but in terms of in terms of brook and um in terms of Brook and um, what's his, what's the guy's name, and Garcia, uh, I think that's a good fight. I do. I think that's, I think that's a fight. If Kell Brook wants to enhance his legacy, because remember, this is a guy that beat Amir Khan in his prime, and most importantly, this is a guy that would be favorite to win this fight if they were to fight now. Garcia is a favorite, would be a favorite going into this fight. He'd be the bookies' favorite going into that fight. So this is what I'm trying to say that and Garcia is still a top like Garcia is still a top 10 welterweight for me. Kel Brook's not a top 10 welterweight. Garcia is still a top 10 welterweight. Garcia is still a guy that could fight at world level. 
So Kel Brook beating Danny Garcia, wow. That that's not like a Khan win on your resume. Because everybody know Khan was so washed. That would be a serious win. And that would be a win where you'd have to start saying, wow, that's a great win from Kel Brook. Even though Garcia is a smaller man, but that's irrelevant. Garcia, like I said, would be favourite going in against Kel Brook. Just because of the fact that I, 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 yeah, I think that's a. I think that should be the fight that Kel Brook takes. Taking a Eubank fight and getting beaten up by Eubank, which is what I think Kel Brook's going to do. I think Kel Brook's going to take the Eubank fight because that's just always been Kel Brook. When Kel Brook fought, had a chance to fight Jesse Vargas and Golovkin, he decided to fight Golovkin because that's just the way Kel Brook's been. I feel like he's always been the guy that's never wanted to risk any like risk. And what I mean by risk, look, he was going to fight Jesse Vargas for short money, right? But there was a risk that he could have lost that fight. Like, I'm not saying like that I would have favoured Brook in that one, but Vargas is a good fighter. Vargas might have beaten Brook, but Brook might have got paid eight, nine hundred k for that fight, where he got four million for Golovkin. So he had nothing to lose going and fighting Golovkin. But he had, but but he had something to lose to fight Vargas because if he had lost to Vargas, he wouldn't have got a big payday, and he would have lost. Now he would have, he was by fighting Golovkin, he knew he was still going to be a welterweight world champion. But he didn't want to take that risk of becoming... Like, Kel Brook could have become a unified champion by fighting Jesse Vargas. He would have probably got a Pacquiao fight. You know, if he had... If he had... Hold on. So, personally, I think Kel Brook made a big mistake there uh, by fighting... By fighting uh, Golovkin. I don't, I don't want to hear the bullshit about... Oh, well, you know, Kel Brook didn't have the opportunities and he had to secure himself. I, don't, don't give me that rubbish. No fighter thinks about that. There's many fighters that were earning less than Kel Brook. You know, that earned less than Kel Brook, that were much better than Kel Brook, that never earned anywhere near that. Kel Brook would have got the opportunity to get a big fight if he had become a unified champion. So don't buy that nonsense. He sold out his career against Golovkin. So I have no... I, see, if there was no fights, and this is where people say where nobody wanted to fight Kel Brook, that's rubbish. Rubbish. Because Jesse Vargas was willing to fight him. Jesse Vargas was actually angry. That when Kel Brook kind of decided to go the Golovkin route. I remember an interview with Jesse Vargas. And Jesse Vargas is saying Brook's going to get smashed by Golovkin. You know, he decided to take the easy way out. Kind of easier payday where he's going to get beat. But at least, you know, he still gets to keep his welterweight title. Whereas against me, he had a lot more to lose. I remember Jesse Vargas giving that interview. on I believe it was IFL or was it Fight Hub? I can't remember. But for me, that was the fight for Kel Brook to... to for me enhance his legacy but you know Kel Brook decided to kind of go down a different route uh by fighting Golovkin and really that ended up ruining his career so to speak um so yeah that's my take I think Kel Brook if he wants if he wants to fight on I think he should fight Danny Got I think he should fight um personally think he should fight uh what's his name Danny Garcia I think that's a legacy fight he beat Prime Khan Right, Garcia did, and uh, Garcia is a very accomplished fighter. He's achieved a far more a lot than Kel Brook has, um, and it's an opportunity going into a fight where he'd be underdog. See, Khan and Brook were seen as like a 50-50 fight, and the bookies actually had Brook a favorite going into that fight uh, because of I think the bookies realized that this Khan was gone, you know. Whereas against Garcia, Brook would go into that fight as an underdog. So if Brook wins this fight, he'd get more respect from a lot of the neutrals because a lot of the neutrals will be picking Garcia. See, this would have been a 50-50 fight and maybe people would have edged towards Brook in their in his prime. But like I said, I've I've spoke to a lot of Brook fanboys that think that Brook would have totally washed Garcia. You guys are delusional if you think that because Garcia's never been washed. Brook ain't no Errol Spence. Right? And that wasn't in a, in prime Garcia. Brook, like I said, is not I I think Keith Thurman would have beaten Kel Brook. Right? Keith Thurman, for me, was the best welterweight in the world at that point, right? And Garcia had a split decision loss against him in a very close fight, in a 7-5 type fight. And Keith Thurman, for me, is a bigger puncher than Kel Brook. Keith Thurman has got better footwork than Kel Brook. Keith Thurman is a better mover than Kel Brook. Keith Thurman is a boss. Like, Keith Thurman was an absolute animal of a fight. He, he would have beaten any welterweight at that point. Keith Thurman was a monster. But enough of that. If Kel Brook wants to solidify his legacy, don't fight Eubank, fight Garcia, because that, for me, would be a serious fight. That would be a fight where Kel Brook can enhance his legacy as a welterweight. 
Because Garcia, plus Garcia will fight him at 154. Garcia ain't, he's not afraid of fighting Kell Brook at 154. Like, this ain't the Amir Khan situation. Garcia will fight him at any weight. Do you know what I mean? So he'll fight Gar Brook at a weight where he'll be comfortable. Garcia, because Garcia's got a granite chin. So Brook ain't hurting him at 154 or 160. It doesn't matter. Brook can't hurt Garcia. You know, Garcia's got one of the best chins in the, in the, in the time I've been watching boxing. Right? So... That, that isn't going to be a fight where the only guy that's going to get knocked out in that fight is Kel Brook. If there's a knockout in that fight, it's only going to be Kel Brook getting knocked out, not Danny Garcia. Nobody knocks out Danny Garcia. Nobody knocks out Danny Garcia. Kel Brook has been stopped before three times. Nobody knocks out Danny Garcia. I'm telling you, Garcia's got one of the best chins in boxing. Um, so, like I said, that for me is Kel Brook's going to have to win of hard difficult 12 round decision which is going to be very difficult for Kelbrook to do at this stage in his career against someone as as big a puncher as Garcia Garcia can really crack you know so that's a great fight man that, that if Kelbrook takes that fight salute to him if he wins that fight oh my goodness my estimation of Kelbrook would go really high if he can beat that Danny Garcia at this point um you know you have to give him a lot of respect because in, in the Khan situation Right, he took the Khan fight very seriously. He was training for seven months. He he dedicated himself. So if Kel Brook can pull this one off against Danny Garcia, wow, you have to take your hat off and say, wow, you know this guy's done done the biz. But yeah, enough of that. It's a long video. I'm gonna talk about the second part about Plant and uh, Canelo. Guys, Caleb Plant wants a Canelo Alvarez rematch, and he says he wants to earn it. He said he just doesn't want it gifted to him. He wants to earn that rematch. You know, and that's how it should be. Like, I feel like Callum Smith probably wants a Canelo rematch. But a lot of these guys, look, uh, Caleb Plant was well beaten. Callum Smith was well beaten. If you want a rematch with Canelo Alvarez, you've got to earn it. You can't just say, I want a rematch with Canelo Alvarez because nobody wants to see that nonsense. Nobody wants to see you fight Canelo again because it was, it was quite a conclusive loss, wasn't it? Caleb Plant got beat comfortably. By By um, Canelo Alvarez So it's, it's a chance for Caleb Plant to Cement himself and earn that shot And what I mean by earn that shot He can earn that shot by By fighting Jamal Charlo David Benavidez you know, but I actually think that there's not going to be much demand for that Caleb Plant fight anyway now. Uh, Caleb Plant, he's a good fighter, uh, but I think I think he's going to have to do some serious work. Like, he's going to have to beat David Benavidez. He's going to have to beat Jamal Charlo. He's going to have to beat those guys and wipe those guys out for him to put himself in recognition. And even then, would, would there be a demand for that? I think the only reason that fight... Like, personally, there would have been no demand for a Caleb Plant fight if he didn't hold the IBF title. If Caleb Plant didn't hold a, a belt, there would have been no demand. There would have been no, no demand for uh, a, a Canelo Alvarez and Caleb Plant fight. Nobody would be calling out for that fight. The only reason there was demand is because Canelo wanted it. Because Canelo wanted to be undisputed. And Caleb Plant knew that. That's why they were playing hard. To, they were playing hard. To, you know, they were, they were playing hard. Because they knew that Can Canelo wanted that belt. So they wanted... They, they wanted... They wanted to make sure that they got paid. You know, so Caleb Plant was like saying, I want 10 million, I want this, that, and the other. Because Caleb Plant knew he had all the eggs in his basket. You know, Caleb Plant, he knew he had the lottery ticket. That's why Caleb Plant wasn't going to fight David Benavidez or anybody. Because why would you risk that opportunity? Like, Benavidez wanted that fight because Benavidez knew if I beat Plant, then Canelo's going to want the belt want the belt off me. Do you know what I mean? So, Caleb Plant won stupid. Caleb Plant, you know, he, he did the right thing. He's a smart businessman. You know, he thought I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna risk my opportunity of fighting uh, Canelo Alvarez. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll fight him. Um, I'll, I'll wait, and when I, when that opportunity comes, I'll fight him. You know, Caleb Plant was gonna sit on that belt for sure, and anyone would, anyone would. If you know you got, you know, Canelo Alvarez wants to fight you, and you hold something that he wants, you're not gonna go and risk that opportunity of potentially losing that fight. 
But this is a problem, right? That Caleb Plants made that money. Caleb Plants got a lot of... He's got a lot of dough. So he can now have these fights. And Caleb Plant maybe fight Jamal Charlo. Fight David... Because Caleb Plant knows, right? The end goal for me is to get a rematch with Canelo one day. But how am I going to get that? Even if I... Even now, Caleb Plants increased his profile after that Canelo fight. With everything that happened. With the social media. The, the viral clip of him getting... You know, pushing Canelo. And then Canelo hitting him. All of that went viral. Caleb Plant became bigger. He became a bigger star. So... Caleb Plants benefited from that that uh, publicity, so now you've got to you've got to look at it that Caleb Plant will have these fights with Benavides, have these fights with Charlo because he knows that I'm gonna get paid well regardless. He, if I win, then the end goal might be a Canelo fight down the road. If I lose, I'm 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 made for life anyway. So Caleb Plant's in a position now where Caleb Plant's made. Caleb Plant, Caleb Plant should be fighting everyone and anyone now because Caleb Plant, for me, is in a position of power. He's financially, like, if he's smart with his money, with the amount of money he would have made in the Canelo fight, he's, he's financially sorted for life. And not just that, even now, he's become a bigger name. So the f opportunities that he's going to get, right, he's going to be in good, like, not as big a money a fight as he got against Canelo, but he's going to be involved in big money fights. He's going to be involved in big money fights where he's going to make a lot of money. Do you, do you see where I'm coming from? So, K Caleb Plant, he's had it off, really, when you think about it. Caleb Plant, like, he's, he's laughing. He's, ma he's making money. You know, where he's going to make money. So, Caleb Plant's in a great place for me. He, Caleb Plant is in a great place. So, personally... I think I, I, th I think Caleb Plant should definitely, definitely um, fight the, all these guys because he's got nothing to lose now. You know, he had his chance against Canelo. He didn't disgrace himself. He did well. Um, it's an opportunity for him. It's an opportunity for Caleb Plant. To cement his legacy that, yeah, he might have not been good enough to beat Canelo, but, you know, he's good enough to beat David Benavides. He's good enough to beat Charlo. See, that might be an opportunity for him. And Caleb Plant mustn't let that opportunity slip. Do you see where I'm coming from? I think, I think it's a great opportunity. I think it's a great, great opportunity for um, Caleb Plant. I do. It's a great, great opportunity for Caleb Plant to show that, you know what, I'm a top fighter. Because right now, a lot of people think that Caleb Plant gets destroyed by David Benavidez. Does he? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like Personally, I'd like to see that fight. Because I don't know whether he does get destroyed by uh, David Benavidez. I have my doubts. I'm not that high on David Benavidez like some of you guys are. I'm not that convinced by David Benavidez like some of you guys are. So... I want to see that fight. I want to see how good David Benavidez is. I want to see if David Benavidez is a truth or is he just a guy that's, you know, a guy that's being pumped up by, a, you know, certain fight fans that think he's good. Look, I don't know. Maybe he is the real deal. Maybe he is that good. Maybe he's not. But we need to find out. So hopefully, hopefully we get to see that fight. I, I, I'll be, look, I really want to see it. I really want to see it. So, yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what's next uh, for for Plant uh, because I think Plant's a good fighter. I think I think he comes across really well, um, and I, I think there's some big fights to be made from PBC. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed in the sense that look, I I feel like they they say that there was negotiations with the David Benavidez and Plant, and that fight kind of fell through. Uh, I really don't see from from Plant's side what the issue would be now, because if you're if you're Caleb Plant. You've had the Canelo fight. You've got a loss on your record. What have you got to lose? You've got nothing to lose. For me, Caleb Plant's got everything to gain now. Because Caleb Plant is financially made. Look, in this game in boxing, right? The most important thing is for you to secure your financial future. Once you've done that, everything else is a bonus. Yeah, people talk about belts and legacy. First thing is to secure your financial future. Once you secure your financial future, then you can worry about legacy and belts and all of that stuff. But your first goal is, as a fighter, to secure your financial future. Like guys like, look at Anthony Joshua or Tyson Fury or guys like that. They're not, like, 
they're not fighting for money now. They're fighting for legacy. They're fighting for, for you know, to enhance, you know, their name, to enhance their, their image in the sport. Not for money, because they've got money now. Anthony Joshua is a multi-millionaire, so is Tyson Fury. They're not fighting for money now. Of course, they're fighting for money in terms of they'll get paid whenever they fight, but it's not like they need the money. They, they could retire today and they're, they're, they're made for life. They don't have to work again. So that's the point I'm trying to make is that first, your job is to secure yourself financially. And for me, Caleb Plant has done that. Caleb Plant has secured himself financially, which is the most important thing. And 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 now it's just about for me is creating him creating his legacy for him going out and proving that you know what Caleb Plant was the real deal. Caleb Plant was a top fighter. That's what Caleb Plant's got to do now. It's for Caleb Plant to show the world how good Caleb Plant is. And that's why I think I think I think Caleb Plant's in a great position because a lot of guys like Benavides and Charlo. I think, Char personally, I think Charlo's made a lot of money. Now, Benavidez talks and says he's made a lot of money. Uh, I don't know how much money he's made. Like, is he getting paid a lot of money? Like, I think Charlo's already a very, very rich guy because Al Heyman pays well. And Charlo's got somewhat of a name. I think Charlo's made a lot of money. Uh, and Benavidez might have made a lot of money, but Plant definitely wouldn't have. The so Plant, if Benavidez is right in what he's saying, he's made a lot of money, then Benavidez has got nothing to lose. Charlo's definitely got nothing to lose because Charlo, I know Charlo's made a lot. He's made a lot of money. He, Al Heyman will be paying him well every time he fights. So Charlo should be, he should fight anybody, right? And Plant now, he's financially in a great position. So he's in a position where he should be fighting anybody. You know, I remember when Danny Jacobs, like when Danny Jacobs fought uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez, uh, Danny Jacobs got paid, I think, something like $15 million. And a lot of people were like crazy. But I think Danny Jacobs, again, was another fighter that was actually getting paid pretty well prior to that. That's why he got such a big payday. Because I think he was getting paid decent money. So it, it's all about what you bring and how much you've made. And like, like even when Khan fought um, uh, Canelo, that was... That was a long time ago. That was 2016. He got paid a shed load of money as well. But that was because... That was because Khan was, that was because Khan was a, a big star and a, and a huge name and a very accomplished fighter. So, when you look at Caleb Plant, he got paid, he got overpaid. Caleb Plant got overpaid because of the fact that he had that belt. Like Caleb Plant, if if it was any other situation where Canelo was fighting like a Bivol, for example. Plant wouldn't have got that opportunity of getting that kind of money. But because of the fact that. Canelo wanted that belt so badly Canelo was probably willing to overpay Plant Because he wanted to make that fight so bad And he wanted to become undisputed so bad So Plant was lucky He just was in the right place at the right time Otherwise Plant wouldn't have got that opportunity But Plant played tough Plant played hard And rightfully so Because in my opinion When you're a When you're a big when you're, when you're in a great position like that, you shouldn't let it slide. I think anybody would have done the same thing as what Plant did because Plant had an opportunity to make a life-changing sum of money. Remember, Plant wasn't like... I, 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 there was reports that Plant had never made over a million in terms of purse prior to that. And I think he got paid 10 million. So you can't knock him because 10 million pounds or 10 million dollars is a lot of money, guys. That's life-changing sum of money. Like you make 10 million, you're sorted for life. Like plant, if he's clever, he probably don't have to work again. He could just buy like some properties and put them out for rent uh, and make so much money. Like literally, like you know, he can invest in things and you know have a good team around him. Like he's made for life. And remember, he's gonna be fighting on, and he's gonna be now probably every fight he's gonna have unless he like doesn't keep losing. But most fights are gonna be like a mill now because of his of his credibility and how he performed in that fight. And the fact that his profile is increased, he's probably going to be touching uh, an M every time he fights now. Or near around, near or rough around there. Especially if he fights a top boy like Benavidez or Charlo. Then he's definitely going to be making maybe two or three mil, who knows. So this is what I'm trying to say. Like Caleb Plant's in a great position financially. Caleb Plant might leave the sport making it, depending if he, keep, if he wins some of those fights, big fights he has, like against Benavides and that, he might leave the sport maybe worth 20, 25 million dollars. So this is what I'm trying to say. Like you've got to strike while the iron's hot. And Caleb Plant struck while the iron was hot. 
You know, he made the fight and he, look, he got paid handsomely and now he's in a great position because financially he's laughing. Financially he's in a great place. Now it's just about a legacy and what Caleb Plant desire and hunger Caleb Plant has in order to be great, in order to be recognized as a great fighter. Because Caleb Plant, let's be honest, he hasn't really done a lot at world level. You know, he, he fought Canelo, yes, he did well, but he lost. It's an opportunity for Caleb Plant to go out there and prove his worth against someone like a Benavides and Charlo. And then people will say, wow, Caleb Plant was a great fight. He didn't just do well against Canelo, he beat Benavides. Because those are more winnable fights for him than Canelo. Canelo was just too experienced and had too much for him. But Benavidez fights and Charlo fight, those those should be more winnable fights for him. So, yeah, like, I'm really intrigued to see how Charlo, I mean, how Plant gets on. I think it's going to be very interesting to see how um, this all plays out. Uh, can PBC make these fights with the, you know, these fights that we want to see? But we'll have to see. Time will tell, guys. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, smash the like button, share this video, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.